All right, now, new topic, which is a bit nice. So how reliable is our memory? So we've got all these lovely memories stored away in the folds of our cerebral cortex, or if it's a procedural memory in our cerebellum. But when we bring those back um, to our working memory, are they reliable? So this is what this dot point is about. Okay, so memory, to be a memory, has to be retrieved. Okay, so that's how we know a memory has been formed because it can be retrieved. Okay, so we can get it out. Okay, all right, now there's three ways we can retrieve these memories in our long term, these inactive memories. Okay, there's recall there's recognition, and there's relearning, okay? Now, they are listed from the least to the most sensitive, okay? So, what that means is sensitive is more like, it's a measure of retention. So, we'll just take a word here. So, to be sensitive, we're talking about if it's the most sensitive, it means it's the easiest to find, I guess. Okay, so easiest to find. So think of a little search engine inside your brain trying to find something, okay. So the most sensitive is the easiest to find. So, and it says here they're listed from the least to the most. Okay, so we'll talk about each one and then we'll come back to this because this is one of those tricky little concepts. Okay, so recall, that just involves recalling information. You wouldn't write that on the exam, but just remembering it. So, for example, if I got you to do a free recall task, so um, a classic one we do is, you might remember Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. Okay, if I said to you, name every one of those Seven Dwarfs, that's just free recall. Now, you might be able to remember Three or four, you might remember Grumpy, Sneezy, Doc, Sleepy, okay, maybe four. If I said to you, okay, I want you to recall every person who was in your class, um, in your first class of school, so whether that was grade prep, uh, maybe grade one, name every student that was in your class, okay? You might be able to recall maybe, I don't know, a third of them, but that's what's free recall. So you're just retrieving as many items as possible from memory in any order, okay? So we'll put here for an example, something that works for you. So it could be um, the names of all the Pokemons, for example, um, but I'll just put here names um, of people, maybe even in your year seven class. That wasn't that long ago, but long enough. in your Year 7 form or homeroom. Okay. Um, serial recall, that's free recall too, but there's an order to it. So, for example, if I said, tell me all the months of the year, that will be easy. You go January, February, March, April, so much easier. And if I timed you, you'd probably do that in less than 10 seconds. But if I said to you, okay, tell me the names of the months of the year backwards from December, then you'd start to, you could do it, but it would just be a little bit slower. And if I said to you, tell me the months of the year backwards, but every second month, that would be a lot harder because you haven't learnt it in that order. So serial recall is orders. Huge recalls, I like these the best. This is when I often say to my students, can you remember that part of the brain we we're talking about that's got to do with consolidation of memories and it starts with H. Okay, so you're giving the letter. 
So um, with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, I might say, oh, there was another one um, beginning with, you know, a letter, and that would help you remember that person. So the prompts would be like, um, starts with H, the hippocampus. Okay, so prompt. But the point is they're all recall. Okay, so this is saying it's the least. So I'll put this on the side. It's the least sensitive. So that means it's hardest for the brain to find. It can find it, but it's just a little bit harder than the other two we're about to meet. Okay, so they use recall often in multiple choice. Actually, not multiple choice, short answer, sorry. Part B questions on an exam. Okay, so that's why it's a little bit harder to study for the short B because it's just pure recall. They might, you know, want you to answer something about something, um, you know, like Lazarus and Folkman or Galley's Theory of Stress, and you've got to actually remember it, you've got to retrieve it from deep in the depths of your cerebral cortex and write it. So recall is a little bit harder. Okay, recognition um, is the one in the middle. So, and if we're talking about the exam, the closest thing to that would be section A, multiple choice. Okay, so recognition. You might not remember everybody in your Year 7 home group, but if I showed you the photo, the class photo of that year, I'm sure you'd be able to remember everyone's names or most people's names. Okay, so this is where you can see things. Okay, so you're recognising something. So in a multiple choice question, they're a little bit easier for most people um, because the cues are there and you recognize them. Okay, so I'll just put here for the example, um, when you um, are given a photo, from year seven, and you can actually use recognition, you recognize people, um, and then you can name them. Okay, and then finally relearning. So here's a little bit of maths for once. <laughs> All right, so relearning, and this is why these revision classes and these lectures are so good for you because we're going over and over and over stuff that you've done at school. We're doing the revision with you, okay? So this is relearning. And according to neuroscience, it's the most sensitive. Okay, so the more times you go over something, and if you even think about it at a cellular level, we've got long-term potentiation going on. You know, every time you read over something from the past, you're strengthening those neural connections. Okay, so that's relearning. So it's sometimes called the method of savings, and I'll explain that in a sec with the formula, but it involves Learning material again, that's the key word, that was learned previously and you think you've forgotten it, okay? And so we measure it as a percentage. So it often happens, you know, with French, for example, I remember learning French at school and um, I didn't look at it for years and then I went to France and I was surprised at how many words started to come back to me because I was relearning it. But then when I went to China, I'd never learned Mandarin before in my life. I had no idea of what people were saying to me. I couldn't read the street signs because I hadn't learned it before. So relearning something the second time or the third time, the more times you relearn it, um, the more easy it is for you to remember that. So the more times you revise these psychology notes or you listen to the lectures, the better it will be for going to your long-term memory. Okay, 
So this formula down here, don't be worried a little bit about it. It's just basically a very simple formula when you look at it. It's just a percentage, okay? So you're just working out, um, you can replace time or trials. I like to do it with time. So like, you know, the first time you learnt something minus the second time you learnt it. So it's basically like a percentage change question. So the time it took you to learn something the first time, so maybe it took you, say, 20 hours to learn um, maybe a musical instrument, didn't touch it for a couple of years, and then you sat down again and thought, oh, I might just try and play this particular piece, and you might have found that it only took you, say, five hours this time to learn it. Okay. So 20 minus 5 is 15, and you put that over 20, and then you just times it by 100 over 1, and you get a percentage, okay? So that's basically the time you save learning something the second time, okay? And there's a case here too. So here, so say if it takes you 10 trials to learn a list of 16 nonsense syllables, such as S-A-J. So we use these knots and syllables a lot in memory tests, okay, because that way you're not, like if we told you to remember words like cat, dog, they're a little bit easier. So often in a memory test you get to learn knots and syllables. So say if there were 16 of those and it took you 10 goes to learn them, okay. Now if we tested you three months later, you would probably learn those in five trials. So if you put that in the saving score calculator, 10 minus 5 over 10 equals 5 over 10 times 100 over 1 and that's a really easy one you can do in your head you'll see that it's 50 percent so you have a saving score of 50 percent and that's the most mathematical psychology ever gets okay now reconstruction this is um just one that we'll throw in here because we'll talk about this in another dot point when we talk about something called the fallibility of our memories. So fallibility means how correct are our long-term memories. Okay, so fallibility is a really important word that you need to know. Okay, and we actually know from psychological experiments and research that they're not actually very fallible. They're not reliable. In fact, we know that memories can be reconstructed. Okay? So every time you recall a memory, you can actually add things or omit things and you can actually mould it so it's the memory that you want to retain. Okay? So plays a very, reconstruction plays a very important part in our consolidation of memory. And so we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, enough theory, let's do some questions. Okay, all right, so question 29. Give you a sec to read that and then we'll just talk about it. Okay, so we've got um, a list of words and asked to define them. In order to answer these questions, Luke needed to use something and something to access the information. Okay, so they were given a list of words and asked to define them. Okay, so um, we can get rid of encode and encode because we know these aren't words that we've talked about. So we've got it down to a 50-50. So does he have to recognise them to retrieve them or to recall them first to retrieve them? Okay, so hopefully you can see the best answer there is if you're given a list of words, they're buried in your memory. So you've actually got to remember those words for a start. So that's the recalling bit. You have to recall learning them. Um, and then... Retrieving is what this is all about. So those R's about the recall, the relearning and the recognition is all about retrieving. 
Okay, so that's why 29 is important. Okay, question 30, still on Luke. All right. So on another occasion, Luke's teacher gave the class a multiple choice test. So hopefully you already remember what the act is going to be. So multiple choice test, the good thing about multiple choice test is it goes for that middle one. It goes for the recognition. Okay, so often there's a word in there that you recognize, like we just did then, and so the answer there is B. Okay, so remember on a psych exam, section A, multiple choice, is going to be largely recognition, whereas section B, short answer, is going to be largely recall. And of course, relearning is going to be a big part of it because you're going to be revising, revising, revising. Okay, question 31. Okay, when studying new information, it is necessary to first blank so that it can be blank in long-term memory. Okay, so all our information when we study, hopefully you know straight away that we want it to be stored in our long-term memory. So everything you're doing, even just by listening to this, you're trying to store this information in your long-term memory. Okay, so straight away we've got stored. Okay, so even if we don't know what the other ones are, we can go backwards and work out, well, it has to be C. So encoding basically just means working the memory, processing the information, so it can be stored in long-term memory. Okay. All right. Victor and Mia enrolled in art history at university. Victor had not studied the subject before, whereas Mia had studied it before. Okay, so straight away, hopefully, your brain is going, okay, this is a question about relearning. Okay, so um, Mia had done it before and Victor had not studied this subject before. Okay, but before we get to that, in this test they were asked to identify the names of 10 famous artists from a list of 20 names. Okay, so hopefully your brain is going, okay, they're trying to find in a list of 20, 10 artists. So that's a bit of recognition going on here. At the end of the semester, they were given a different test. In this test, they had to remember and write out a list of the names of the 10 famous artists. So here, they had to rely on recall. Okay, so hopefully now, I'll just give you a second, have a look at question 32, and I'm hoping the answer's just gonna jump out at you. So the test at the beginning of the semester and the question at the end of the semester respectively were, and hopefully you got B. Okay. Now I wanted to do that the long way because I wanted to actually work the question and sort of show you what you can be doing um, while you're reading the question to help you answer it. So you should be writing all over these exam questions, especially when you've got more than two or three lines of reading to do. Okay. Question 33. Okay. Here we go, here's our question about the saving score. Okay, so it took her less time. Okay, so Mia calculated her saving score because she'd already done this subject before was 50%. What does that mean? What does the saving score mean? It actually just means this. It took her 50% less time to study for the second test. So if you're a little bit confused about that saving score formula, We'll just write that out so you've got a little bit of a memory. It's basically the time taken as a percentage to relearn something, anything. Okay, how much time you save. She saved 50% because she'd learnt it again. And you can imagine the more time you learn it, the 
that number will go down. It'll get less and less and less. So maybe next time it will be 25%. Maybe next time it'll be 10%. So think of that. Every time you revise this work, it's taking you less and less time to remember it. Thank <laughs> you.